Welcome to the Jill on Money Show. It's Sunday, June 18th. It's Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to fathers out there or any parents out there. Hope you have good celebrations. Today, we're continuing our conversation with Dorothy Brown. She is the author of a book called The Whiteness of Wealth. Now, this is an interview that we aired uh, a while back when the book first came out, but I thought as we are approaching Juneteenth, it might be helpful to understand how the United States tax system does disadvantage black Americans. And importantly, Dorothy provides the ability for us to figure out how we can fix that very same system. I think that she's dynamic. She's awesome. Um, I could listen to her just for hours on end. Truly, she she is a real treasure. So anyway, we are going to go into the tax code, but also go into wealth disparity in this part of the interview. So here is the second part of my interview with Dorothy Brown. If you just look at the idea that each side of a black couple tends to contribute more equally to the overall income, so they get penalized there, they often would get penalized because they couldn't actually buy a home. They didn't have enough money to do that, and they were not able to grab the home mortgage interest deduction or all the other property tax deduction, et cetera. Where else did you go to try to understand how come the wealth disparity persisted beyond the tax code? Home ownership is a big driver of white wealth. Right. So looking at the returns to home ownership, so I looked at sociology research that showed that when you had more than 10% of your neighbors are black, the value of the home declines. And if it's more than 20%, it declines even more. So the greater the percentage of black neighbors, in the neighborhood, the lower the value of the home. So you could see in sociology research that goes back decades that shows the racial disparity in home ownership. And you have so many people saying, well, if we just had more black people owning homes, we'd be able to make a dent in the racial wealth gap. I will say this, equity or net worth of black homeowners is significantly higher than the net worth of renters. But there will always be a racial wealth gap associated with home ownership because Black Americans live in predominantly Black or racially diverse neighborhoods that don't bring the appreciation with it, whereas white homeowners live in homogeneous white neighborhoods with very few Black Americans. Okay, so now you have to tell your own story about how you basically are like, oh, wait a minute, I screwed myself by buying a house in a Black neighborhood. (laughs) Yes, so... The first home I bought was in an all white neighborhood in Ohio and I sold it. I made money. It was no problem. I thought that's how home ownership worked because this was before I did any research on home ownership and tax subsidies and race. So I moved to Virginia. I buy a house in a racially diverse neighborhood on purpose because the area is very white. And as I put it, I want to see black people other than when I look in the mirror, right? Mm. So I buy a home on a racially diverse street, think nothing of it. Then I move to Atlanta and I'm selling the home and I can't sell it. And I'm starting to do research for race and home ownership piece I'm writing. And I'm like, oh my God, I can't sell my home because I'm living in a racially diverse neighborhood. I can like smack my forehead. Ultimately, it sells, but it left a mark, right? The research left a mark. Now that I know, I can't unsee it. And when I moved to Atlanta, I couldn't quite figure out the real estate market. But more importantly, I didn't want a job tied to a home again. So I bought a house on Martha's Vineyard. Why? (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Why? So I vacationed in Martha's Vineyard since the late seventies and love it. And in the summer, lots of black people are on the vineyard, right? So when I tell people I go to the vineyard, they go, huh? I'm like, oh, you don't understand. It's like black Mecca up there when you're walking around in the summer. So it's a white area, but there are a lot of black people. So for me, it's the best of both worlds. But yeah, I use this information to buy a house in Massachusetts and I live in Georgia. You end your chapter on the black and white housing market in your great book, The Whiteness of Wealth. And you have some tips, um, which is, of course, I don't want to harp on the buy in a white neighborhood, but you said one big tip is to have neutrality in the tax code. Now, interestingly, I feel like there is like 
maybe a glimmer of hope of actually having tax reform under this current administration. But I still feel like that mortgage interest, man, it is sacrosanct. So what do you think is the possibility of just that gets scrapped eventually? Oh, I think it's huge. And here's why. The Trump tax cuts. The Mm. Trump tax cuts, which increased the standard deduction, significantly minimized the percentage of taxpayers who itemize, and you have to itemize deductions in order to get the benefit of the mortgage interest deduction. It used to be one in three Americans itemized. Now it's one in 10. The increase of the standard deduction significantly decreased the amount of Americans that can get a tax break because of their mortgage, whether the real estate lobby complained, it was irrelevant. They weren't able to stop the train. So Mm. given that we're now at a point where one in 10 itemize, I think we've got a much better chance now of getting rid of that and other itemized deductions. And one other thing that you pointed out, which makes so much sense to me, and I was thinking about this because I was sort of my first entree into journalism was I, I was a money manager, financial planner, and then I came over to journalism right amid the financial crisis. And um, Mm -hmm. one thing you point out, which is fascinating, is that, you know, you could buy any asset in the universe. And if you lose money on it, the tax code will help you out, but not a house. Yes. And black Americans, black homeowners are more likely to sell for a loss than white homeowners. So black homeowners get disadvantaged by our tax subsidies, by our tax policies, right? Why can't we allow a loss on a sale of homes? Where did that come from? It came from the idea that a home is a personal asset as opposed to an investment asset, something held for income. Black millennials wealth is sliding. Now, what's I think important about this is this can really bring us to the conversation around education and higher ed. So I know you're in higher ed up to your eyeballs. Don't slam your institution of uh, that's paying your bills. But the system of how education and loans and how this has developed has really disproportionately hurt people of color. Can you explain why that is? Yes. So we see that black Americans leave college with more debt than white Americans. And over time, the disparity grows. Part of the problem is Pell Grants have not come up with the cost of tuition. So we have a lot of low income black Americans who go to college. 60 percent of black students who start college do not finish and they leave with debt. So the racial wealth gap has a significant piece of it due to the racial gap in debt between black and white Americans. Okay, tomorrow for Juneteenth, we're going to air the third part of this interview with Dorothy Brown. The book is called The Whiteness of Wealth. It's amazing and really well researched, really smart. So I encourage anyone who is interested in this topic to pick up that book. And meanwhile, if you would like to find more content of the like, you can just go to our website, jillonmoney.com. Click the Contact Us button if you have a question. We're always here to help you out. Do let us know if you'd be willing to come on the air. Don't forget to sign up for the free weekly newsletter. Or maybe for Father's Day, you can hurry up and buy the Great Money Reset. Send that off to your dad. Or maybe you can subscribe to our new service, Jill on Money Live. You can get a subscription for you and dad. It'll be so great. That way you both have access to quarterly live webinars and also lots of special bonus content. Put your hands metaphorically on someone's back. Change your work, change your wealth, change your life. Thank you for listening, and we'll talk to you tomorrow. 